All right, your final video of this semester that you have to do work on is volume of spheres. I know it's been a long journey doing this online stuff. It's been super awkward for me because I'm like, hey, answer my questions, but y'all are all who knows where. Um, so this one is pretty straightforward as well. It's another formula where I would do radius. Uh, it does get a little confusing with the fraction, but we're going to do some examples. Remember, if you only need one or two examples and you're good to go, that's fine. Turn off the video, complete the assignment. If you need all the examples or you just want to watch all the examples, go ahead and stay. I'm going to work through them all. Um, but remember, if you have questions, if you're confused, hit me up on Remind, Google Classroom, email, all that good stuff. So like always, we're going to start with our formula first. And your formula is volume equals. And instead of one third, we have four thirds pi r cubed. And really, the only variable in this is this r, which stands for radius, of course. We are going to be really careful with this four thirds, though. Um, the first thing we're going to do is multiply by four and divide by three when we turn our r cubed into a number. And that may not make any sense right now, but it will once we start doing the examples. All right, so your first example here, I'm still going to write it volume equals four thirds pi r cubed. I first need to figure out what my r is. And in this situation, I go from side to side of the circle, meaning I have the diameter. So I need to take that diameter and divide it by two in order to find my radius. So I take four, which is the diameter. I divide it by two. When I do that, I find that my radius is also two. So I'm just going to go and plug everything in first. So four thirds pi, and instead of r, I'm going to put 2, because that's what we found our radius to be, and you still have that cubed on the outside. So far, we've been dealing with squared, meaning we multiply it by itself just the 2 times, so 2 times 2, but this cubed is now 2 times 2 times 2. There are three 2s, which is why there is a 3 in the exponent. So 2 cubed, if you have a calculator, it'll do it for you, otherwise you need to do it by hand or in the calculator step by step, two times two, this gives me four, and I still have that second or the third times two. So two cubed is the same thing as eight. So now four thirds and pi stay the same, but this two cubed is now gonna become eight. I am gonna rewrite this so that four thirds and our number are next to each other and that pi is on the end. Pi is kind of going to be like forgotten because we're just going to carry it down through our math. So I told you that we were going to take the number we got and multiply it by the top. So I want to do 4 times 8. When I do 4 times 8, that gives me 32. And the last thing I told you to do was to divide by 3. So if you want, you can leave your answer like this, 32 divided by 3 pi. Or if you want the decimal for that 32 divided by 3, it is the same thing as 10.67 pi. So we're going to multiply our number by 4 and then divide it by 3. So these two answers are the same exact thing. It's just a preference. If you want it as an improper fraction, which would be 32 divided by 3 pi. Or if you want it as a decimal-ish answer, it's 10.67 pi. So it's your choice, whichever one you think is easier. So example two, volume is equal to four thirds pi r cubed. Here I give you the radius. You should see that your radius is three. So four thirds and pi stay the same, but I now have three cubed, which remember, this is three times three times three. So three times three gives me nine. I drop down that third times three right here, and nine times three gives me 27. So I now know that 3 cubed is 27. Remember, I want to rewrite this so my fraction and number are next to each other. So 4 thirds and 27 are right next to each other, and pi is on the end. Our first step to this, we take 27 and we multiply it by 4. And when you do 27 times 4, you end up with 108. But remember, it's not just 108. We have to divide it by 3. Don't forget your pi, just keep carrying it down. So you can leave it as 108 divided by 3 pi, or it ends up being 36 pi simplified. All right, example three, same thing. 
The rest of the examples are me just working them. I go back and forth between diameter and radius. So if you understand what you're doing, you're good to go. If not, stick around and we'll keep working them. So I know that my diameter is 12. And in order to find my radius, I need to take that diameter and divide it by 2. So I find that my radius is 6. So when I plug it into my formula, 4 thirds pi times 6 cubed. Remember, that's 6 times 6 times 6. If you have a calculator, you can plug it in. You may have to do it by hand if not. So then I have 4 thirds pi. That 6 cubed now turns into 216. So I'm going to write them next to each other again. 4 thirds times 216. Pi is on the end. Please don't forget about your pi. I'm now going to do the top. So I multiply 216 times 4. That gives me 864. Don't forget that divided by 3, though. So write divided by 3 pi. Remember, if you want to stop here, that's fine. If you keep going and you simplify the fraction, you should end up with 288 pi. I've been forgetting the units of measures, but this is meters cubed as your volume. Example 4, I introduced a decimal, so it's nothing too intense. It's just going to be a little bit of weird math. So 4 thirds pi r cubed. I don't have to find the radius because I give it to you. So instead of r, you're going to put that 6.1 cubed. When I multiply that out in the calculator, I end up with another decimal. So I'm going to leave it um, as 226.981. Again, we rewrite them next to each other. 4 thirds times 226.981. And that pi is out there on the outside. Your first step for this is to multiply 4 times our decimal. When I do that, I end up with 907.924 divided by 3 pi. When I divide that decimal by 3, I end up with 302.64 pi meters cubed as my volume. Example 5 is still a sphere, so volume is 4 thirds pi r cubed. But I do give you the diameter here. So diameter is 11.8. And in order to find that radius, remember we just divide it by 2. So your radius is 5.9. I can now go and plug everything into my formula. There's only one thing technically. But 4 thirds pi times my r is now 5.9 cubed. 5.9 times itself times itself again gives me 205.37 9. When I rewrite them next to each other, I need to remember to not leave the pi behind. It's on its own on the outside at the end. So your first step, of course, is to multiply that by 4. And when I do that, I get 821.516 on the top. You still have to divide by 3 on the bottom and put pi at the end. When I do 821.516 divided by 3, you get 273.84 pi miles cubed as my volume. So there's two more examples. Example 6, I give you the diameter again. So remember, we're just going to half that. So 4 thirds pi r cubed. I'm going to replace that r with my radius. When I do 8 divided by 2, it gives me 4. So it's going to be 4 cubed. When I do 4 times 4 times 4, I end up with 64. I rewrite 4 thirds and 64 next to each other. Again, remember, we take 64 and we multiply it by 4 first. When I do 64 times 4, it gives me 256 on the top. We still have to divide by 3, and then you have your pi on the end as well. When I divide by 3, if you're choosing to, you get 85 Point three three repeating pi kilometers cubed as the volume. And then finally our last example. Again, I gave you the diameter here just because, because why not? So my diameter is 10, which means I take 10, I split it in half or divide it by 2, and I get 5 for my radius. When I do 5 cubed or 5 times 5 times 5, I get 125. Again, I like to rewrite it. If you don't want to, that's your choice. I rewrite 4 thirds next to 125 and then put pi on the outside. 
And now my first step to finish this is to multiply 125 times 4. When I do that, I end up with 500. And remember, you still have to divide that by 3. At this point, if you want to stop here, you can, or you can get the decimal-ish answer. And that gives you 166.67 pi feet cubed for your volume. Again, this assignment is also only going to be like five questions long. Um, these ones are pretty straightforward. Make sure you are entering your answers on the slides. Um, if you're using the pi answers, you just type in the word pi, so P-I. If you're getting decimals, that's fine too. Um, make sure you are submitting pictures of your work. This is going to be your last uh, assignment that you have to turn in. If you're all caught up, then you are good to go for my class. If you're not, please catch up on those assignments because you don't have that much longer to do them.